Nanyosha mikono yangu juu Naisifu nchi yangu marufu Nanyosha mikono yangu juu Naisifu nchi yangu marufu to to this uh, uh, as we said uh, a hybrid type of interaction uh, but otherwise a very focused uh, force interaction on technology inclusion which is uh, one of the uh, uh, strategic initiatives that we are following uh, since Dar es Salaam uh, hopefully on the way to South African uh, Smart Partnership International Dialogue later this year. Um, now, uh, in the previous um, uh, interactions since uh, June, uh, in particular, we had a number of uh, issues who ha which have been picked up from Dar es Salaam. And, uh, I think I need to get used myself with the fact it's a webcast rather than a teleconference, so it's boss. So I was talking to the teleconference rather than talking to look. So now I'm going to get into the webcast mode. Um, yeah, so we, we, uh, we, we picked up a few of the initiatives and the issues which were left in progress, work in progress since Dar es Salaam. And um, uh, obviously there is uh, science technology advice, uh, including uh, the, uh, as uh, Tan Shrioma, uh, chairman, highlighted very well about uh, last time we discussed on uh, uh, science technology innovation policy, uh, issues related to capacity to leverage, I'm quoting from his uh, uh, conclusion of the last meeting, and issues to do with management in relation to science, technology, innovation. So capacity to leverage as infrastructure, finance linkages, and management of STI related to policy, governance, specific institutions, and enablers. But uh, even more important to remind ourselves, look, is that um, what the whole smart partnership interaction and uh, practice brings in is not necessarily the uh, technical aspects of each and every subject but is this uh, ability of trying to bring in interconnect uh, the national visions with or through the uh, technology inclusion uh, say standards inclusion uh, and uh, of course the financial inclusion financial inclusion it was an extremely good for instance uh, example last week on 3rd of july the interaction between the central bank governors who yes they did come from basel last week from their uh, bis annual meeting and they were intended to speak about financial inclusion uh, and smart partnership approach, what difference that makes in their own countries. But they ended up actually mainly to discuss about financial technology as the main preoccupation, not the mobile banking, mm -hmm. but, so, but specifically on uh, issues as we mentioned just uh, before we started related to um, uh, currencies, um, cryptocurrencies or Bitcoin and the follow-up blockchain, etc., and the implication to do with that. The Chief Executive Bureau of Standards of the BSI, uh, Dr. Scott Stedman was here, and he also added to that from the point of view of the inputs on standards. So this specific issue that Smart Partnership is trying to follow up from Dar es Salaam is not necessarily connected only with technology or only with central bank governors, financial inclusion, or, all, or only with the vision, but it's to do with the in integration, interaction between these various groupings 
mm-hmm. both of the policy and capacity, but also in the management. So the smart specialization that in Dar es Salaam and then later on in November last year, you brought in as an example of a policy which quite a number of uh, European countries adopted in a very quick fashion uh, with various challenges was something that interested uh, a number of countries, interested Malaysia, interested uh, Seychelles, and of course it will interest, uh, interest, uh, continue to interest Tanzania, uh, Uganda, uh, I'm sure South Africa in its own context, uh, etc. So, could we for about kind of 10 minutes or so try to go through uh, I have the luxury to have your paper mm-hmm. that is not yet published, and thank you very much for sharing it yes, with us. It, it, will be, it will be online in a couple It'll of weeks. It will be online a couple of weeks, so yes. we have it in advance, so thank you very much. Uh, you, um, so it's called Adapting Smart Specialization to a Microeconomy. So I suppose uh, it's quite connected to the kind of economies we have, with the exception of our shock, unless we divide <laughs> India in many microeconomies are shock. Yeah? And true, it's true, right. So, look, for about 10 minutes or so, if you go through the challenges of and uh, pros and cons of smart specialization. Yeah? Okay, yes, yes with pleasure. So, um, to, to begin with, I should say that smart specialization is a concept that has come up in the context of regions rather than whole countries, but of course, if you're talking of a small country, effectively it becomes a single region. So it's just as relevant to India as it might be to uh, Malta, the case that Uh I I worked on. Uh So probably Uh it might be relevant to Sadek, maybe a East African community. Yes, yes. Well, well, no, this is not not supranational regions, Uh regions within a country. Within a country. The idea is each region of your country should have its own smart specialization strategy. That's an important point. Yes. Fine. Okay. well, you, you, you mentioned that it's been uh, taken up by European countries. I mean, they effectively had no choice to take it up because the, the main development funding, which comes from European Union funds, uh, what we call structural funding, which helps you build the infrastructure of your economy, is nowadays mostly directed towards infrastructure for research and innovation. And uh, the Commission this time round uh, made it a condition of signing off that funding that you should have an accepted smart specialization strategy. Incredible. Um, and then it, uh, it provided uh, experts, of whom I was one, to assist the countries in, in developing their strategies. Uh, mm. uh, so that, that's why it ca- came forward very quickly as a political priority. Uh, but I'll, I'll wind back and say yeah. why, why, it, why it got into yeah. that uh, yeah. state. Um, in the past, uh, each region and certainly e- each country did say that it had priorities for its uh, um, research and innovation resources, but uh, effectively they, they all had the same priorities. I mean, what, Everywhere you went, there was a list which said uh, information technology, biotechnology, new materials, etc. Yeah, with slight variations of, yeah. of precision, but normally very little granularity. So very large statements, which could almost any uh, any clever researcher, and researchers are usually clever, could fit their work into. Um, and it's the same for companies, and and therefore not creating any differentiation, and not really focusing on what was there in the first place, what the countries or regions' assets were. So uh, around about 2007, the, this, uh, the, the theory, if you like, was first put forward. When was that? 2007. So, so it was quite um, I mean, um, uh, Two economists called Foray and Van Ark were the first to, first to propose it. Um, uh, I think the concept has evolved quite a lot since that time, but the the basic idea was that uh, a region should engage in, in a bottom-up process with heavy business engagement, so not, not top-down planning, and identify areas of specialization that 
that really did reflect its own assets, strengths, real economic conditions and opportunities and then build uh, a strategy uh, around that. So um, this should therefore create differentiated and tailored strategies. Uh, now it's not a one-off process, you don't just do it once and think the job is done, it needs to be dynamic but the strategies are signed off only at one point in time by, by the European Commission in, in our particular context. So uh, um, they call that the process itself is important, it's not only that you should be specialised but also that you uh, should have gone through the right kind of process and they call this the process of entrepreneurial discovery to uh -huh. indicate that business and entrepreneurial people Who calls are, that? I mean, that is... It's important. part of the theory, if you like, and uh -huh. the guidelines for doing okay. it. Uh -huh. So you don't only have to show that you have a strategy, you have to show that you've arrived at that strategy by a robust process. Mm -hmm. And it should include some other things, such as use of foresight, for example, and uh -huh. uh, 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 other tools of this kind. Mm -hmm. So that's... Uh, but you don't necessarily need to have foresight in other tools um, to start. You would be expected to to, to do to let's say to have a systematic process. That's what the choice of tools is your own. Yeah. These are things which can help That's you help you to do it. So there's a there needs to be a trail, if you like, mm -hmm. that these are not priorities which mm -hmm. have been produced by uh, you know the, the the traditional bog sat methodology. Bunch of guys sat around the table, but uh, right. once. But that you know, you did yes, have some engagement to arrive at uh -huh. it. Yeah. So, so, so you would imagine. Uh, I mean, if you put it in the, in the language of CPTM, you could see a series of dialogues working yeah. towards it. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so uh, partly my job was to act as the Commission's agent, if, if you like, but uh, also um, less formally, but more importantly, to help in the production of it. So. Uh -huh. uh, I, I worked principally with the Malta Council for Science and Technology. We did a, mm -hmm. a, a large-scale consultative exercise over a period of four or five months mm -hmm. where we initially consulted public sector stakeholders on where they considered to be the key opportunities for the Maltese economy mm -hmm. and where those opportunities could benefit from research and innovation. Uh, this was fairly high-level heads, heads of agencies permanent secretaries of ministries and so we were working so would you yeah, say so that most of the government departments, the ministries, um, were in one or another? Uh, yes, although the majority of those consulted were were agencies, we did see key ministries including the fin permanent secretary of the finance ministry for example. Uh -huh. so, uh, what about the prime minister? But we didn't talk to the prime minister. Yeah, no, they 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 receive the result if you Fine. like okay, okay. for the high Fine. levels of government. Fine. Um, uh, also spoken to at that stage were representative organisations. So the um, the organisation that represents business, uh, some specific ones, for example, representing the tourism sector. Uh, um, uh, other sectors, mm -hmm. the, the unions and so on. So and the, you could say a good round of stakeholders. Okay, now, all the smart partners links. Yeah, so from that we produced a, a first cut at what people seem to be saying were the key sectors for the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, we then invited a first audience from business primarily mm -hmm. to come and discuss this. They helped refine that concept um, and uh, also to identify the linkages between it. So ICT clearly is very per pervasive. Um, mm -hmm. it, it underpins a number of other opportunities. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Malta has done quite well, for example, in attracting financial services and gaming. I don't yeah, mean yeah. gambling, I mean yeah. designing computer games yeah. and things like mm -hmm. this. And of course those are dependent upon uh, 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 s some a strength in I ICT, and so you get all these connections mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. going across. So we, we had a first map, if you like, um, which identified some key sectors and opportunities within those sectors. Uh, we then ran a series of uh, more sectorally based uh, consultations. So, mm -hmm. so w 
typically one one for each sector and, and a few more on top of that covering cross-cutting issues. Mm -hmm. So but by the time it had finished you could say there was a very extensive consultation. Mm -hmm. Pro probably the first time that business had really been asked to get into such detail in, in any kind uh -huh. of uh, strategy, national strategy right. making exercise. Uh -huh. And uh, How um, large is the business in uh, Malta in relation to government? Um, well, I mean, clearly expensive. the private sector is important, yes. but um, it, it is a small economy, and I would say yeah, probably only the tourism sector has a critical mass visible mm -hmm. in international terms. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons the, the, the paper, which has been circulated mm -hmm. for the background here, is talking about adapting smart specialization yes. to a microeconomy, yes. yes. is that things are different in a microeconomy to mm -hmm. say, uh, large region in Italy or France or, or, or Spain. Um, some of the things that are different are uh, um, uh, broader e economic issues. You're, you're, very, um, you're very dependent on a few key companies, for example. I mean, um, uh, at one stage, 40% of uh, Maltese uh, manufacturing exports were dependent on a single firm. Uh, and a, a branch plant of ST micro um, uh, electronics. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you have fairly limited um, expertise, often very good people, but thinly spread. There's only like one or two people in each subject area in, 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 in the university. Mm -hmm. So you have to design an approach which allows you to gain critical mass by, by multitasking, by able to keep reconfiguring those resources. So you might have the, the same people being important to more than one sector because you can combine that expertise and get up to the 20 or 30 exp experts you might need to support a sector. The same applies for business. It needs to be flexible. However, in a small island economy, the, th the thing companies probably most miss and which cuts them off from innovation is that they're not in international markets. Uh, two reasons. One is one of communication and culture and the other one is uh, they've adapted to the economic size. So they, they produce goods which are adapted for a small scale. Mm -hmm. Now you can take oh, e every advantage and, uh, and has a mirror in disadvantage and the other way around. So mm -hmm. if, if your problem is that you only work on small scale, you can specialize in small scale goods, for example, so uh, small-scale desalination equipment, for example, that, uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, that, that runs in different economics from, mm -hmm. from, from large plant and, mm -hmm. and so on. Um, smart specialization does also talk about pathways, so it was a country that used to be quite dependent on, on its dockyards. Mm -hmm. uh, that business substantially declined, I mean, first of all the Royal Navy left and then the um, uh, various large-scale attempts left. However, out of that has developed uh, some specialization in servicing super yachts and uh, mm -hmm. a cluster yeah. has built up around that. So you reinforce the strength so the industry mi migrates to uh, uh, a new place. You can look at assets which are not exploited at the moment. It's a country with a, a good health system, a fairly consistent uh, and stable genetic base and good health records. So you could imagine in the future it could be a good venue for clinical trials, for example, and consider that you might build up a pathway um, uh, of that kind. So it's a mixture of assets and opportunities, but in the end your strategy has not just got to say, well, you know, where we started, we're going to do biotech and well, you know, we'll build a biotech park. It's got to say, what in biotech, where do your advantages lie? What can you build on? You've got limited resources, if you're going to have a chair in the university, what should that be in? If you're going to buy equipment, what equipment do you need? What should you share with somebody else across the border somewhere? So it's quite so specific in yes. implementation tests, yes. guidelines yeah. for implementation. In fact, what we've said is, because of the need for flexibility, you also need a process of constant update. I mean, at least in our report, we've recommended they establish uh, industry platforms for these sectors who monitor what's going on and uh, uh, allow adaptation in the light of uh, a changing world. I think it would be risky to say these are our choices and we're going to stick to them for 10 years. You, mm -hmm. you, you need to be able to be nimble when, when something comes along.
So that, that in a nutshell is, is what it means. So it's, it, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not doing anything new, it's doing what we're all trying to do in innovation policy, but it's doing it more systematically and trying to stop a, a, a herding effect, which means you're almost guaranteed to lose. So, um, if you take in, in very specific terms in Malta, which were some of the clusters that emerged? And they are following at the moment. So you said... Well, the, the final list, um, I mean, because it covers service sectors uh, yeah. um, uh, as well, are um, tourism marketing. Mm -hmm. So there was a feeling that in, in, in the tourism sector, although re recently su successful, was not making proper use of, of, of modern technology in marketing itself, giving virtual experiences and, uh, and so on. Uh, maritime services, as I've already mentioned, uh, clearly a, 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 an island which is situated on, on major maritime uh, routes, uh, so design and services. Uh, for similar reasons, aviation and aerospace, the business has built up in uh, um, aircraft ma maintenance, uh, mm -hmm. for example, um, so some high value engineering can be built around that. Mm -hmm. uh, health, uh, I mentioned previously, it's currently a rather fragmented sector but mm -hmm. could be pulled together strategically. Uh, and then construction, uh, so quite a strong construction sector. It's not been very quick in picking up trends such as sustainable construction, for example. Mm -hmm. So there's a um, big opportunity to build, build in cross-cutting environment uh -huh. themes uh, in, into that. Um, within manufacturing, some very precise um, uh, areas of, of, of high value added. I mean, there's a secondary pharmaceutical sector, mm -hmm. for, for example, yeah. there. Mm -hmm. uh, and a, a couple of small ones, I mean, uh, aquaculture being an example. That was, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. So, Okay, so but uh, one of the main reasons why um, I suppose this approach of smart specialization picked up was because there was a promise that is small economy or otherwise, there was a promise of support if smart specialization strategies are being implemented in a country. Yes, so there is there so is a strong ins there's there both a incentive. stick and a carrot. Uh -huh. I mean they're saying you won't get the money unless you have one and then once you get the money you're expected to move in these directions. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I so at the at the level of a country like such as Malta, this exercise has been put in place. Not more um, as an exercise, as a strategy ready to Yes, it's, it's been built into the National Research and Innovation Strategy, uh -huh. forms a chapter of that. Now, um, you know, it's, it's too early to say at the moment uh, how, how, it's going to be how, how the information, the, I mean, there has been a change of government, but the yes. deal with the European Commission doesn't change, but of course the new government will want to put its own stamp on how, how things are done. So. Uh, no, because this, yeah. is, this is an issue. The reason yes. why it's useful to take yes. Malta as yeah. an example is because Malta has been very much part of our group since 1984 and mm -hmm. uh, Jenny is one of our also founder from Jennifer from the Malta Council of Science and Technology and uh, he's co she's co-author of this paper on use. So um, in most of the countries that we have, obviously there are elections changes of government and otherwise. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like something of a kind of, uh, of the kind of thing that uh, you outline, yeah? Uh, wouldn't in any way be of a kind that it could be changed because um, it's, it's, it's simply an interaction between, I mean, they may, they may change a focus or the, the emphasis on one or either other sector mm -hmm. because of the new policies or new strategies yeah. but that are brought in place. But otherwise, is an implement is an enhancement the way I look at it, yeah, mm. of implementation 
of an integ in an integrated way that's because uh, there isn't any yeah. anything anybody yes. can do about that. Yeah, they don't uh, change fast. Uh, that, that, that's the whole point of it. In yeah. fact, it's terribly relevant, for instance, to uh, for instance the country where we we are likely to have the smart partnership dialogue this year in South Africa because. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there is a national development policy, a national development plan, and uh, there are specific emphases in, uh, in, in the, in the, by National Planning Commission. And of course there was uh, a national election, uh, a new uh, government inaugurated, and in the State of the Nation, uh, President, uh, our host patron, uh, has emphasized things like energy security, uh, digital security, in addition to other things. So what would you immediately think of in terms of uh, the uh, lessons for, from uh, uh, what you said, of a smart specialization in relation to particular sectors which could integrate other sectors? Am I right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and th this is in relation to delivery, to implementation, rather than in relation to ongoing policy um, renewal. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So, it's very relevant to the smart partnership kind of dialogue, the kind of dialogues we are going to have in October this year to South Africa, including to many other uh, countries that uh, already uh, listen to this, but um, the, uh, the 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 challenges in doing this um, uh, in implementing some of this strategy by a leading or the leading science technology council or agency in a in a country that is small or otherwise mm -hmm. is probably quite considerable. In not only in Malta, but anywhere else. So you have National Council for Science Technologies. You have even, they are being attached to Ministries of Science. Mm. They may be even attached to National Overall Advisory Council for Science, where the Prime Minister or Head of Government is, is uh, kind of overseeing, like in Malaysia, like in many other countries. But that being said, still somebody needs to as you said, to monitor, to implement, to review this mass specialization uh, yes, for a I number mean, of years, including needs to have money for it. Well, well indeed, part of the um, part, part of the recommendations, uh, and certainly a strong feature of my report to the Commission, was the need for a, a, a much better monitoring and evaluation system than exists uh -huh. at the moment. and. Uh, of the schemes yes, of um, the kind that well uh, yes well for the research and innovation system mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> generally I'm I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm leading a, a peer review currently of the uh, Spanish research and innovation system uh, mm -hmm. this is the national one not a regional one at, at the moment and we're due to report very shortly and something we're hearing again there is is the need for very high quality monitoring and evaluation. I, I don't think you can have an effective system unless you have that. Irrespective how much yeah. the strategy for instance mass specialization yes. is terribly attractive, but unless yes. well, and yeah. the monitoring how I mean you you're very well known in this field for years. You've just been to business where did you come from? From the uh, from our, our, our ministry department of business innovation and so I'm sure yes, you've been right. touching on that topic. Uh, yeah, yes, we're, we're currently carrying out a, a, a review of UK innovation policy instruments. Right. Yeah. So, um, so I, I suppose the monitoring and evaluation within a country of a strategy for specialize on strategy on smart specialization. Mm -hmm. Yeah would need to be taken from where? We need to take place from where? From the same outfit which well, is coordinated? I mean, the, 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 I mean the, the, the technical work can, can, can be construct, can, um, can be subcontracted. 
but I would say the responsibility for yes. ensuring the system in place should lie with the relevant ministry, the ministry uh -huh. that, or ministry or ministries that deal with science and innovation. Uh -huh. I mean, there's no one one size fits all because each country has its own system of government, but uh, of uh, you need it to yeah. hook in fa mm -hmm. a fairly high level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you? Would would uh, uh, be particular types of um, developments in technology or likely developments to come, uh, hence foresight that you thought mm -hmm. would be a, a good tool, uh, would, would there be some of the areas which you would think that most of the countries might need to have on there, irrespective of their strengths or otherwise? on trying to specialize. I mean, there is, I'm, 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 I'm telling you about this digital um, uh, specialization that probably every country that they can or they can't, they well, will have to. Uh, every country needs to master okay. the key, key technologies, if you like, the, yeah. uh, uh, digital, certain key areas in health sciences and so on. But this isn't talking about the underpinning technologies, this is talking about the where you then go in, in bringing them into innovation practice. Uh -huh. yeah, so. Okay, yeah. so hence the business is involved in yes. and yes. Uh, the unions yes. and so on. Yeah. Okay, um, well I mean uh, are there an, are there immediate, is there an immediate reaction from uh, those who are, uh, who joined us? like uh, Dr. Amiruddin or uh, from Malaysia or Dr. Ashok Jain and uh, yeah, I understand I, Dr. Oh. Hassan is online but uh, uh, Ashok and Dr. Amiruddin yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. please uh, Ashok it's a very well put very well explained brief uh, by you, thanks very much indeed. Uh, it brings us uh, into three issues. And I think this is a very pragmatic way of dealing with intuition because differentiation and diversity uh, at the natural level, if we, if we discuss, then these uh, pockets, regional pockets, Yes, excluded in our uh, strategy. So I think the key instrument, the process that you can describe, is making connected with inclusion. That's point number one. And I think, though, as you yourself said, many of the things were being done in bits and pieces, for example, the product. Uh, specific in whether you call it the one region, one product, or clustering of uh, various types of gardens and so on and so forth. The one was the product people were trying to do it. The second is, of course, the networking. And I think the most uh, important, in my view, has been the process which was described in Luke's. Uh, I think if this process is the key for connecting the various uh, straight uh, strategies into one conceptually sound moral framework. I mean, the uh, there is one aspect which I think you did mention, uh, uh, maybe if you could talk elaboration, that is the culture. Uh -huh. Because when you are dealing with regions, then the culture of entrepreneurship, the culture of partnership. Mm -hmm. Just to give you an example, in, yeah. uh, in the cluster that we work through European Commission in Gujarat, mm -hmm. the culture is the family network. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Punjab, the culture was through the MRIs. I think the, yeah. the networking, the process which you has described, mm -hmm. its success or failure would depend critically on the yeah. sensitivity to the regional culture of interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, give you another 
to the fact that, uh, forget about smart partnership, they picked it from us, I'm joking, but is it re smart related maybe just to that, that is adapted to product and culture and various other things? Because that's what I... Yes, what, I would say that sums it up. That's, yes, that's yes, the way yes, I, yes, read, yes, I, yes. I interpret it without even... Mm. When, when I've been to your colleague well. in European Union, Leonardo, whom you introduced us. Yes. That's what I understood that was smart about. So could you... Yes, because, I mean, spe specialization can happen anyway, but you could be driven down a path of specialization that you have no control over and might not even want. Uh, this is saying that it's a proactive specialization. And it's quite adapted mm -hmm. yes. to the context yes. of uh, region, culture, and problems. Yeah, and I must say, I mean, I think Ashok has raised an absolutely crucial very, very point, important. this one about... Yeah. Uh, um, being I in the culture, um, yeah. uh, specifically the business culture, but perhaps also the political culture of uh, uh, where, wherever you're, you're working. And uh, by and large, of course, you have to work with that and try to make it, uh, make it a, a strength. I mean, the regions of Europe where you could recognize the Gujarat family culture, regions of Italy, for example, Imagine the whole that. business structure is based on that uh, yeah. also. But on, on the other hand, uh, there will be some crunch points where you have to try and break up that culture a bit as well. It might be closing their eyes to opportunities and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe there's somebody over the border who can, uh, they can work with instead that will, will create something new. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a delicate balance, but you certainly have to recognize it first before you try to interfere with it. It's a bit of an incentive yeah. for learning to share mm. if you can't do it, but mm. you know that you can, one can uh, rationalize about it. Uh, Dr. Kamaruddin, Kamaruddin. Uh, you, you are online? Dr. Kamaruddin from know. Kuala Lumpur, yeah. Well, I suppose, I, I suppose, uh, would, I mean, quite earlier on, a number of years ago, there was this intention to, with through multimedia corridor to try to get in advance of cyber security and many other things to try to get by the way of vision 2020 Malaysia yep. with the various uh, uh, 
obviously cultural, multiracial, to try to pull it together. And um, I suppose it was a kind of intent for smart specialization through multimedia corridor as a tool. Yeah? yeah? Uh, can you, can you, could you, could you elaborate a little bit about where you are yeah, at the please. moment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically the concept, I mean, uh, the smart specialization is basically, I would think, a method of strategy or policy making process. Uh, and we can say that it's more like a cluster kind of approach. This time applies to a region, or you call it also adapted to a small country, whatever. And it's about focus. That means you identify the niche areas where you see the strength and path, and then from there you build the strategies around that. This is what we have been doing uh, for the past few years on. Uh, uh, in the case of cyber, uh, in the case of multimedia super corridor. Uh -huh. But there are a lot of lessons that we learn uh, because of the fact that uh, it's not, uh, I would say, that easy to build a cluster uh, that really works as a cluster. These are some of the challenges. It is the kind of culture of the partnership working together as in the case of industry because multimedia super corridor is about building an uh, ICT industry as a sector. Uh, for the country that can provide engine of growth for the country. So building it, putting up all from the value chain from A to Z, uh, it is really a challenge if there are some, somehow components, uh, some components here that are missing that completes the value chain. Mm -hmm. uh, however, Malaysia does succeed on a certain level whereby ICT does play an important role. And in fact, it does play an important role to the level that it becomes uh, one of the critical uh, engine of growth for the country. But we're still uh, now uh, working hard on it so that we can achieve our vision 2020. What I'm trying to understand actually from the professor's uh, description just now and trying to relate uh, the smart specialization concept uh, is the, the role of STI, uh, how it is embedded, because in the case of multimedia super corridor, for example, it identifies specifically one of the SDI, which is ICT. Yeah. And so, uh, obviously, building a complete ecosystem of ICT uh, is it's actually a challenge. It is, we have thrown from 1996 when we built a multi-million super from the scratch. Then from there, we have decided instead of going from Greenfield, we moved to Brownfield. Yeah? And we built yeah. from the rather than a scratch as a, as a, from the Greenfield area. Uh, maybe uh, through experience in Europe, you know, maybe the Professor can share uh, how uh, SDI role uh, can play using that smart partnership, uh, smart specialization model to transform the country. Because that's what the goal uh, for countries like Malaysia is envisioning uh, the role of leveraging technology for socio-economic development or transformation. Uh, Okay, I and uh, yeah, you, you you have a quick answer to that. Look, I mean a, a little bit of a difference between, if it's possible, the cluster issue concept is included, uh, but the, this smart specialization go beyond that a little bit. Yes, I mean they're they're, they're, they're clearly related. You know, yeah. A lot of European energy went into and in Harvard and elsewhere in mapping between the two, but uh, yeah. it is a, a wider concept, I would say, than, uh, than clustering. I mean, if I could pick up the role of um, FDI, I would say, of course, FDI that's already there, you should integrate in the process a lot, along with uh, native uh, companies, because they are part of your, your innovation eco ecosystem. I mean, there's, there's a separate question about uh, how to attract them and that can be a core part of the strategy it's part of our core strategy in, in the Manchester region for example that we are seeking to uh, provide the right kind of trained people and the right conditions to bring uh, major inward investments in the life sciences or the I ICT sector and uh, using graphene for example as an attractor mm -hmm. yeah, so. yeah. yeah okay uh, Dr. Kabaruddin, uh, in relation to the, um, say, as a shock raised, the issue of culture, um, obviously one, one, one of the things that uh, 
in Malaysia is still trying to, uh, to, 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 to take place in a more intensive way is the attraction of business, right? The attraction of business, the business culture with the government structure. Uh -huh. Now, I would have thought, and that's why I'm very much welcoming you being uh, directly part of this discussion, I would have thought that because of the multimedia type of corridor and everything else that followed, hmm, including your probably, Malaysia is one of the first countries in emerging economies who set up cyber security institute. I would have thought that the private sector would be interested to take part in a smart specialization kind of cluster, if I were to combine the two, around your issue. Um, uh, I mean, the Cybersecurity Institute is dependent on ongoing technology development. Um, uh, just a central bank, right? Please, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, the private sector. How, how difficult it is to interact that, uh, with private uh, sector? Uh, hey. uh, and also in the context of cyber security, we feel that uh, cyber security uh, cannot be just uh, uh, focusing on uh, public sector. In fact, there is a need to have public private partnership in ensuring the cyber security plays its role uh, for social economic development, including yeah. in the case of. Uh, uh, multimedia super corridor mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it cuts across sectors and uh, public sectors uh, can't play that role. In fact, some of the specialties, the uh, expertise reside uh, in the uh, uh, public, uh, private sector. And uh, in the case of a smart specialization, uh, I think uh, maybe we can look from the angle of the areas of cyber security. Yes. Uh, the, the areas that we find, uh, this is where we are good at. And, and on the government side, but at the same time, the private sector have that certain expertise that we don't have. So we can combine that and play the role to develop uh, the region. Yes. A uh, true is what we call this smart uh, specialization uh -huh. model. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, this right. is because uh, now, Dr. Hassan, thank you, Dr. Kamaru, on that. But related to probably ongoing technology evolution that is being developed within the country or you have to keep an eye on what is de being developed outside the country. Most likely is most of that rather than the one developed in any country. Um, you see the, the issue of procurement and I'm, I'm sorry I bring you back uh, just a little bit I promise we won't discuss about procurement but in Dar es Salaam, the issue of procurement and technology became more of an issue and attractive than the smart specialization. That's why we picked up the smart specialization. Dr. Hassan, you are online again? Okay. So, I, uh, we, we'll come back to you when you're ready. Yeah. So, how... D did you, for instance, take Malta or any other smart specialization example in Europe of a strategy? Does that bring in the issue of procurement uh, as a tool to enhance the specialization? Of? Uh, y yes, indeed. It is uh, part, part of the template for a smart specialization strategy. It includes the use of public procurement to create a demand side environment for, uh -huh. for innovation. Uh -huh. which therefore means that you have to be engaging uh, uh, much larger parts of government than simply your science ministry. Or oh, so yes. that, that, that yeah. is probably the main attraction we had in Dar es Salaam and reason why is kind of taken forward towards uh, South Africa because we do need to look in yes. various countries. Yeah. So well, if I you mean, pick you, up you, on procurement, yeah. in one, um, you are not going to have companies which emerge in what are fundamentally local markets uh, incentivized for innovation unless those local markets recognize and reward innovation when they find the, it. The, yeah. the, this is so, unless we are saying, unless within the STI policy 
for innovation, as particularly as Omar is calling it, unless that is brings in management of procurement together with the specialization, the smart specialization strategy, I don't think there is likely to be yeah. progress. Yeah, I, th I think it's it, it, it's a vital part of an innovation vital ecosystem. Part. I mean, uh, it, I, I deal with a lot of startup companies, and I, I can't imagine that I would ever meet a startup company which, if I gave them a choice between having a grant and having a first customer, would choose the grant. I mean, the the, the customer not only gives you revenue, but they also give you credibility. They give you feedback, which allows you to refine your, your, your products and, and make it better. So it, it is really a very important part of the uh, innovation pathway. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't just mean a new company. It could be an existing company that has chosen to go down the path of being more, more innovative. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, um, Ashok, any, any particular comment further? before we are winding down, uh, uh, to try to see if I can get from you, um, as far as you can on the spot, this, and I'll ask Luke too, a, a kind of what would you define as financial technology currently? Financial technology? Yeah. And therefore, would one consider it as a sector? Bear in mind that, for instance, central bank governors are one of the. They are very preoccupied with that. Are you preoccupied yeah, we, with that? In the case of Malaysia, for example, uh -huh. uh, in our national cyber security policy, we have identified financial sector as one of the 10 critical sectors we have defined as the critical network information infrastructure. Uh, in addition to that, we also have like a defense and security sector government sectors and uh, energy, etc. Uh, so in that sense, we see that the uh, financial sector is an important sector where the cyber security has to play some role there. Uh, and, I, in, and as I mentioned last time in our dialogue uh, a few, uh, few weeks ago, yes. uh, to me, normally uh, people may look at the uh, policy, when they, they, they develop the policy, they focus we only on their respective field of uh, expertise, whether it's finance or energy. But uh, now, uh, cyber security uh, is critical due to the fact that all these sectors have ICT components. Mm -hmm. And when it is having the ICT component, it is exposed to the possible cyber threat and risk. Uh -huh. And as such, there is a need to incorporate, and this is what I call the policy innovation, whereby uh, in the design of the policy, we should incorporate cybersecurity 
as a component in the financial sector policy, for example, in the in the energy sector, it's also part of energy security. It's also part of financial security, and it covers various uh, uh, type of uh, security matters that happens in the cyber world. Uh, it's not all that. so. So, for example, you highlight earlier uh, about the issue of uh, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. That's it. This is actually under the purview of uh, Bank Negara or the Central Bank. Uh, in Malaysia, it is concerned, but obviously it is not accepting that Bitcoin as a, a currency, so it's considered illegal currency, because uh, it, it, it basically means that you are doing transaction with no no middleman or, or meaning no bank. Yeah. And that's no yeah. And it is the more dangerous part of it is that you don't need to give your real name. So you don't know who is your anonymous. seller, right. who is your buyer, is based on what you call the ID wallet, ID wallet. And this will encourage, uh, I would say, uh, uh, black uh, market or uh, transaction that involves many illegal things. So it is some of, something of concern also, and that's why in the case of Malaysia and the central bank, it is um, a concern to them and they put it as illegal. Uh, and it's still under very manageable because it's still not that widespread in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So these type of things will affect the economy of a country. So for that reason, it needs to be considered a component of a cyber security uh, in the financial uh, sector or economic policy. Similarly, in any other sectors, in energy, because of the fact that anything happened to the energy, it will interrupt other sectors because the, the, the highly interdependence of sectors yeah. uh, can cause effects, uh, major effects to other sectors. And this is why the fact that nowadays we are in the digital world and everyone is connected in all sectors, they are interconnected means uh, if yeah. one, uh, something happens in one sector, it will affect another sector. It makes cyber security become even more important as a prerequisite in the design of any policy of a country for mm -hmm. social economic development. Mm -hmm. This is how I try to relate it. Leveraging technology for, uh, for transformation or social economic transformation of a yeah. country where yeah. it's not just about development, it's also about securing, protecting it to ensure its sustainability. And this is one way to look at the important side of cybersecurity because many look at cybersecurity only from the technical side That's rather than a cross-cutting enabler to assist and to secure and to sustain the socio-economic growth of any country. Yeah, Dr. Amajin, I won't uh, uh, be tempted to abuse the fact that you are still online at this point, at this late night, but uh, we would like from you and your colleagues something on blockchain and everything else, but not now, because we need to get a little bit our glossaries correct. Now, look, uh, what in Malta, uh, obviously, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, issues to do with uh, uh, financial security or energy security have not appeared in the discussions and consultations. No, no, clear, I mean, clearly there were both elements brought up in the relevant workshops. Yes. Uh, they're such important issues, you can't, can't yeah. avoid them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So would you think that the issue of uh, uh, digital security as a whole, including cyber security, etc., would be... Well, it's, it's, it comes up in two ways, isn't it? I mean, it's yes, something that it's something that all of those engaged in those sectors have to take uh, a, a, as 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 core to what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, it undermines the, the the competitiveness and more of those sectors. And then, of course, there are somebody somewhere could also treat it as their business opportunity in providing it That's as a service and yeah. uh, developing the technology to do it and then for them it would be part of their specialization strategy. So yeah. it's good you, you raise that because uh, I, I would have thought that where we, I'm sorry Dr. Hassan wasn't able because of connections to be online from Dar es Salaam, but I would have thought that where we to uh, bring up the insights from various experiences 
experiences with the smart specialization strategies. We should bring it up towards uh, the next phase uh, to attract businesses because there are opportunities that are being offered, not necessarily for public private partnership, but for actually business as such um, uh, with technology which, what, what do you think? Should we, yes, should we well, put it on the agenda I mean, under that? Well, it's, uh, you know, it's, the, it's the classic story of the, the people who made the, you know, the, the, the cliche about the California gold rush, that the only people who made any real money were those who sold the, the shovels and axes to dig it out. So, well, uh, digital yeah. security is itself a huge opportunity. But quite, it's on the quite, back of quite, the quite right. So, <laughs> to finish it off, where are you two brief ministers of finance and heads of government to say the smart specialization is a, a relatively new approach and it makes a difference. As I've seen that your colleagues in Brussels have got a communication yes. paper to the um, ministers of finance, they said, am I right? In, among other things, they refer to smart specialization, but it yes. is uh, about well, sources the, for renewed growth through research and innovation. Yeah. I yeah. think the, well, the commissioner, minister equivalent in Brussels, who is responsible for research and innovation, feels that the, the pinnacle of her achievement, because she's just le le leaving office, has been to issue a joint communique with the commissioner responsible for, uh, for finance. Mm -hmm. And we now feel that research and innovation is a mainstream part of economic policy. Mm -hmm. And when, when you are there, that's the, that's the place that, you want to be, is, I think, yes. in government. Yeah. One thing I didn't tell you up to now, what I liked about each time I, we provoked you on smart specialization is the regional one or at the regional level and so on, mm -hmm. to coordinate smart specialization. It's, it is networks, it is yes. interconnections between the various, and this is for me the greatest advantage of yes. this approach. Yes, it's, it's absolutely a networked approach. Yeah. So uh, uh, th there were discussions actually recently at the African Union about launching an STI innovation and so on and one of the reasons why they were kind of quite mm. uh, uh, um, uh, they were interested to assign quite a lot of resources both from within Africa and from outside and uh, there was this debate, should we set up a large uh, institutional infrastructure to coordinate the entire STI mm -hmm. innovation? And there were others who, like in any other country, were trying to say that probably that would absorb most of the money that one could get, mm -hmm. or at least quite a large money. So, um, yeah, so is there a time scale for Malta so that we review it uh, to get um, a review? Well, I've, I've completed my responsibility in helping them deliver the, the, the approved the strategy. strategy. So uh, from now on, it's, it's, it's between them and the European Commission. So we'll yes. probably have to keep an eye on Jennifer yes. in Malta itself. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry Jennifer could not join us, right. but uh, uh, look, thank you so much. And probably, I don't know if Malta itself, as an example, could be included in the South African uh, agenda, but through the example, mm -hmm. uh, we can understand more about the implementation of the strategy. So thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you okay. very much also. And thank you to those who yes. joined us. And uh, <coughs> the uh, webcast will be probably, uh, uh, re uh, it was recorded at the same time, and will be sent uh, by our team here uh, by the end of the day. A few notes have been taken also by our team, uh, but uh, the paper that uh, Luke provided, including the webcast uh, recording, will be the main background for everybody else in addition to the technology inclusion group. So that will be made available probably by latest tomorrow to everybody else. I mean, why do we, why are we in such a rush? It's because we're all very eager to reach South Africa. Um, uh, uh, hopefully by October or if not necessarily before and uh, we do need to have uh, wind down the agenda for the smart partnership movement in South Africa and this one will be for sure an issue relevant to NDP in South Africa uh, in the new uh, uh, government. 
So thank you very much, Luke, on behalf of everybody. Thank else. you.